Hi everyone, this is Dan from Forex Boat again, happy to be with you. Today's tutorial is going to cover how to read Forex charts on MetaTrader 4. So let's get right into it. Today's tutorial, we're gonna cover several different aspects of reading Forex charts, You know, where this is one of the more popular topics for traders just getting into the market for the first time, trying to understand some of the need to know items when it comes to looking at charts. So progressively, we're gonna cover the following topics. We're gonna to start with discussing charts as a visual representation of price, continuing on to looking at bars, candlesticks, and lines as representations of charts. Uh, then we're gonna move on to chart settings and saving layouts. Uh, and then we're gonna wrap it up by talking about charts and how it works in combining charts with technical analysis and applying indicators. So let's jump right into the charts. Here we have MetaTrader 4 loaded and ready to go. And when you first come to a chart uh, for the first time, it might be a little intimidating uh, trying to sort out you know, what action to take. But the first topic we're gonna cover today is really just understanding that charts are really nothing more than a representation of price. So when you first start trading, or if you start following the financial markets, perhaps in the news, but yet, but haven't really jumped into trading just yet, you probably are more familiar with price action and prices. And this you can see here in the market watch window of MT4, okay, we see the bid and the ask price, also known as the sell price and the buy price. So bid is another word for sell, and ask is another word for buy. Okay, so that's how you can separate the two. Uh, a trader who was interested in selling a particular asset or a particular instrument would be clicking on the bid price to sell. Uh, a trader who was interested in buying uh, a certain asset or instrument would click on the buy price and that would load uh, the appropriate uh, trade for them. Now, with charts though, we're not really yet at the point of buying or selling. Okay, we're doing a little bit of uh, chart reading first, right? That's why a lot of people come to the charts to begin with, to help in their decision making. And how does how do charts help people in their decision making? Well, first of all, it it gives you, if if nothing else, in the beginning, it gives you a representation of what a certain instrument has been doing historically, how it has been moving, right? Uh, uh, you know, a lot. The very basic terminology we hear in trading all the time is buy low and sell high. Well, how do I know if a particular price that I'm seeing right now in the market watch window, for example, for a particular asset, how do I know if that price is low or high? You know, you need some perspective, right? And the charts are going to give you that perspective that you need. It will, they will tell you whether over a sh the recent past or the far distant past, whether uh, you know a particular instrument has you know further to fall, whether it has a long way to rise, and can tell you uh, whether it, it is high or low at a particular point in time. And this will certainly help in giving you the perspective you need to move towards the ultimate trading decision point, which is where we all want to get to. So. You know, for example, here we can say we can pull up a monthly chart, and we're going to look at time frames in a second as well. But just a monthly chart of dollar CAD, US dollar, Canadian dollar, has been a very popular pair to trade here in 2020, one that we talk about a lot. Okay. Uh, I'm seeing right now on the monthly chart a visual representation of what the price has been doing on a monthly basis. So for those of you that are new to charts, if I'm looking at a monthly chart, what that means is every candle, okay, in this case, we're looking at a candlestick chart, every candle represents one month, okay? And the same would be the case if you happen to switch to a weekly chart, a daily chart, okay, these steps you can take up here by clicking on these different tabs that represent each particular time frame. Uh, so we have the monthly, we have the weekly, we have the daily on D1, we have the H4, which is the four hour, we have the H1, which is one hour, M30, which is a 30 minutes, M15, which is 15 minutes, M5, which is five minutes, and M1, which is one minute. So as you toggle between timeframes, essentially what's happening is 
you're changing the time frames that each bar or each candle on the chart represents. That's what you're changing. And so naturally, as you go to a shorter time frame on the chart, okay, you're zooming into a shorter period of time for a particular asset or a particular instrument. As you go to longer time frames like daily, weekly, monthly, essentially you're zooming out. You're going to longer time frames. And as you go to longer time frames, what is that helping you achieve? Well, that is giving you a more a more precise picture of what the big of, of what the big trend is in a certain instrument. Uh, and as we can see in dollar CAD, we had a really nice uptrend going back several years ago that has met some, you know, what we would call resistance and now looks like it could be topping out and we could see some type of price action reversal. And so a lot of traders uh, these days when they're looking at price action on a chart are looking for things like reversals. They're looking for confirmation as to whether a particular trend is going to continue uh, or it's going to reverse. Uh, in this example, we're looking at US dollar, Canadian dollar, but certainly there's numerous other instruments that we can look at from currency pairs to uh, stock indices. So for example, here we have the CAC 40, okay, which is the French stock index, okay. Uh, we can pull up a chart window of the CAC 40 and we'll see, uh, you know, another set of price action. Okay, here we had a one hour chart load. If I wanted to look at a monthly, kind of what I did with Dollar Cat, I can click the monthly time frame. And so uh, the key point here is that charts are a visual representation of price and that they give you perspective of whether a chart is you know, at a particular point in time, optimal to be considering to buy a particular, uh, a particular instrument or to sell a particular instrument or to take no action at all and perhaps look at another opportunity with another instrument. So that's why charts are really helpful. They help you decide when it's a good time to trade and when it's not a good time to trade. So getting back to our topics here. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about bars, candlesticks, and lines. So when you pull up a chart, okay, you have an option uh, and you have, well, you have many options when it comes to settings and what you can do. Uh, but one of the more uh, asked about uh, settings relates to whether I'm gonna use a particular type of uh, candlestick on a chart, whether I'm gonna use a bar chart, whether I'm going to use uh, you know, uh, something different than that. And here you can see you can toggle between the different types of charts. So right now, I can switch this to from a bar to a candlestick chart if I so choose. I can switch it from candlesticks to lines. Okay, a line chart, you know, I will say that line and bar charts are less used in modern day trading, uh, primarily uh, in deference to or in favor of candlesticks. Okay, because candlesticks give us a visual representation you know, that bar charts and line charts struggle to a little bit because candlesticks will tell us with colors basically whether a chart has over, <clears throat> excuse me, over a certain period of time has closed out of a particular time frame higher or lower than where it opened. And that's what a lot of traders really are seeking when they're looking at charts is they want to know uh, for a particular time frame are we trending higher? Are we trending lower? And bar charts and line charts will help you achieve that, but they won't do it necessarily with the same degree of visual appeal that a candlestick will do. Uh, a lot of times I find uh, bar charts and line charts <clears throat> are more popular with equity traders, stock traders, and commodity traders uh, who have been using those types of uh, those types of charts in the far distant past where you know, before the advent of being able to run a chart online, really candlesticks weren't too much of an option when you're drawing charts by hand uh, or looking at charts in a different format rather than an online chart. So for that reason, candlesticks are, I think most of the time, what you're going to choose to use uh, when you're applying a different chart. So you would simply choose your candlestick, choose your time frame, choose your instrument. <clears throat> As you can see here, you might have noticed, I just pulled up a dollar yen chart, a one hour of dollar yen. If you wanted to go directly to a particular instrument, 
uh, and pull up a chart for it. You can, uh, an easy way to do that, I can show you quickly. So for example, if you wanted to look at a chart of gold, okay, which is represented here by the symbol XAUUSD, right? I can just right click in MetaTrader 4 on the price of gold, click chart, then left click on the option for chart window, and boom, I have my <clears throat> gold chart. So this is a one hour, you can see at the top here, the, the description of the chart. So if you're ever, you know, want to confirm that you're looking at the chart that you that you want to be looking at, you can always see it in the upper left-hand corner, okay, of the chart window. I can see here, I'm looking at XAU USD, which is the symbol for gold, H1, I'm looking at a one hour chart, and I can see for the most recent period, the high, low, buy, close price of the most recent candle, okay, or the most recent one hour, okay? So that should help you with determining, you know, what type of chart you want to look at. I think if you're a beginner trying to decide between which one to use in, in terms of candlesticks, bars, or lines, I would go directly to candlesticks because a big part of trading involves, or excuse me, using charts involves technical analysis, which means you want to be looking at charts that a lot of other traders are also looking at. And I can tell you the majority of the market is using candlesticks. Okay, so if that gives you, if that helps in your decision making, I hope that does. Chart settings and saving layout. So this is an interesting topic because as you start to use charts more, okay, I know in the beginning you might not be very active with them. They might be helping you just to determine simple support and resistance levels. So for example, you might have heard the term support and resistance. If I'm just looking, going back to the same gold chart, I can see here that uh, gold is now approaching uh, what looks to be the most recent resistance level around 1750 1750 US dollars per ounce okay of gold you can see here just visually that we're approaching a resistance level uh you know a lot of times uh that will be enough you know to, to achieve what you're looking for uh with the chart but if you want to do something more in depth okay if you start applying different indicators for example uh and different different types of chart analysis okay so for example if i come into the, not the time frames uh and i get into the different indicators here which you can see under templates okay so if i go to the charts menu at the top you know, this is always a helpful menu i find in metatrader 4 because it allows you to just dive directly into the different charting aspects of the platform and not really get caught into anything else so if you go to charts if you go to that charts menu uh, at the time when you're starting to work on your layouts go to template and then under template you can choose first of all your different indicators there's also another way to start to, cho to choose indicators which we'll cover but you know let's just put for example bollinger bands okay bollinger bands is one particular indicator um, you know that shows you for any instrument uh two standard deviations okay uh and that's just some charting terminology away from the initial price action you can see if the price action has traded is remaining inside or has touched outside of a particular bollinger band and that can sometimes aid in your decision making especially if you're a trader that likes bollinger bands as we know there's many indicators we could talk about other indicators like macd uh, on an oscillating side or you know average true range uh, which we already have on the chart here at the bottom so uh, it really depends on the type of trader you are or the type of trader that you become uh, but when it comes to using charts but most importantly the key point here is that whatever you put on the chart whatever overlays whatever indicators whatever settings that you put on the chart you can save them right so you can always save a template and you can give it, you know, your own particular template name, you know, Bollinger one. Okay. And then you can always have that saved for you. So whenever you want to come back to a particular template, again, you would go to the charts menu, the same way we just did, templates, and then you can click load template. Okay, and that will, and there's Bollinger one. So we can save these templates as many as we like at one time. And you know, you might find that certain templates serve you better in certain market conditions and other templates serve you better 
in other in, in different market conditions, which is why having the option to save more than one template is advisable. And as we enter 2020, or excuse me, as we get through the middle part of 2020, we're seeing all different kinds of price action, right? We just we we're in the middle of what looks to be a, a big V-shaped move in the stock markets, uh, and we're seeing a big a big rise in the purchase of risky assets and risky currencies. But what if that's a trend that is imminently going to reverse, right? And you know your Bollinger Band template isn't cutting it anymore, and you're really looking for something that's going to be more precise in a different way with different indicators. Well, then you might be looking to your, you know, your moving average template that also combines, you know, MACD, which is, you know, you're basically looking for some divergence in the MACD. And so you have cause to switch from one template to another template, uh, which generally speaking as a trader, with, with, you know, going back in my own experience many years, it's more advisable to have different templates that kind of are applicable to different circumstances in the market rather than just dump all different indicators onto one single chart, which can really get messy and essentially overcomplicate your decision making, I think. And on the topic of decision making, okay, that's where we get into charts being a tool for technical analysis. And this is really, you know, an important point, I think, because a lot of times it's assumed like when I'm looking at a chart, I'm going to perform technical analysis. But I know for many traders and my own experience, when you first come to a chart, you know, you're not really using it for that purpose. A lot of times you're really using it to cover what I discussed in the beginning of the tutorial, which is to get a grasp of the price action, get a grasp of are we trading, relatively speaking, at low levels for a particular instrument or at high levels? Is this particular instrument overbought, perhaps, either on the short term or long term side? Is it oversold? Okay. Uh, or neither, right? You know, so there are some key functions that the market, that the charts will serve for you in the beginning that I think is worth noting because in modern day trading, there's so much analysis that traders feel they have the, the, it's necessary for them to perform immediately, especially beginner traders talking to so many beginner traders who were like, you know, show us their charts. And it's like, wow, I see five or six indicators on one chart. And, you know, what are we trying to generate? What are we trying to get out of this? Um, when in fact some big, some bigger picture uh, things are going on with a certain particular instrument that they should be taking note of first uh, and kind of before drawing any conclusions from a range of different indicators. But once you get into the technical analysis side, um, that's really where you can start getting more, um, you know, specific with indicators. You can right click. So I, I showed you how to go to the charts, the different options from the charts from the menu at the top. Uh, we showed you how to go to them from the market watch by right clicking on the exact instrument that you wanted to load a chart from. You know, and then the final point I would say is if you right click on the chart, okay, this gives you a few different options here. But the one that I think is worth noting here before we finish is the indicator list. Okay, so you can click on the indicator list. You can change different uh, from one indicator to another. You can change the settings on different indicators. Uh, really a powerful tool. Uh, for those of you that want to get specific with charts. The other thing I wanted to mention is also down at the bottom, if you right click on any chart, you have an option referred to as properties. Okay. Now, again, as you start to use charts more and more, I think it's very natural, it certainly is for me, to become more uh, you know, picky with how you are looking at your charts, what colors you want on the charts for different candles, uh, you know, that type of thing. And you can see here, uh, we have, I'm using a green and black chart primarily with uh, white candles being, you know, representing upticks or up moves in a particular time frame, and uh, clear candles representing down moves or price action where the price closed lower than it opened, right? So that's what you're seeing here when you're looking at my charts. Uh, however, it doesn't have to be that way. So if you, preferred certain colors for your candlesticks, you can change them here. If you preferred certain colors for, if you're using the Bollinger Band indicator, for example, so right now you can see I have a red color applied there. You know, these are different, these are just preferences more than anything else. Uh, so those are always subject to change based on your preferences. Again, if that's something you wanna do sooner than later, 
you can right click right in the middle of the chart scroll down to the very bottom click properties and start making the changes to the color schemes as you see fit so with that folks we're going to wrap up today's tutorial uh, i really hope this was helpful helpful to you uh, uh, in terms of getting to know the charts on metatrader 4. if you could kindly remember to follow us on the forex boat youtube channel that would be greatly appreciated we have some fantastic content on there and more coming on all the time and so with that this is dan again with forex boat it's been a pleasure to speak with you today and look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial take care